Hello everyone and welcome to PC Retro Tech. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about the original IBM Enhanced Graphics Adapter or EGA card. So you probably remember that in 1981 IBM introduced their PC and one of the options was the CGA or Color Graphics Adapter which you can see here and of course you recognize this from the very famous gaudy 4 color 320x200 games that used to run on it. Uh, just three years later, IBM introduced their PC-80, and this was a 6 MHz 286 machine, and it had the EGA card available for it. And this gave you 16 colors out of a palette of 64. Uh, and just for context, three years later again, uh, the video graphics array came out, or the VGA card, and that was 256 colors. Uh, so the other cards that I have here, uh, this is another EGA card, a much later one, in fact this is 1989, uh, and this is an ATI EGA 1-800 Plus, which would have been considered a very high-end EGA card. In fact, it turns out that this is really a VGA card that's been cut down. They've put an EGA port on it here for an EGA monitor, and I guess there would have been some demand to run these on older monitors. And uh, this one here is uh, a monochrome display adapter, and again, it's a later card, and you can see everything shrunk down to you know half or a third of the size uh, due to this VLSI technology and the chips here. Uh, so the original EGA card would have been uh, over five hundred dollars when it was first available. Um, this card probably would have been similar in price. Uh, however, it, because it had much higher features, uh, that wasn't too much of a surprise. Around about the same time, you could get an EGA card for about $400. So the first thing I want to do today is to put this EGA card into an original IBM PC. Uh, of course, that was three years earlier, but there were jumpers on the main board for a foreign graphics adapter. So we're going to set those and put this in and see that it works in the original PC. So I've gone ahead and installed the EGA card here and you can see it fills up the full length of the PC and the output is exactly the same as for a CGA monitor and in fact I've actually got a CGA monitor connected here at the moment that can display 16 colors no problems of course but a bit more about that later and there are two other connectors here that look like composite video outputs but they're actually for a feature connector so it's a little bit different to the CGA card in that regard so the other thing that we need to do is to set the jumpers and it's this little blue block down in here. Uh, I'm going to need to set uh, 5 and 6 to on which is the setting for a foreign graphics adapter. So the machine booted up without any problems and there are no beeps which is what you'll get if you try and run it uh, without setting the jumpers correctly. Uh, so I'm just going to run a game here. This is a Grand Prix circuit which we've seen with the CGA version of before. Uh, so this is the EGA version, which is actually just a separate version of the game. And as you can see, that's running in 16 colors, which is what we hope. So I'll just let this start, and we can see uh, what it looks like. So it seems to be working just fine. You can see that it's very slow, of course. Uh, we're only getting about uh, one or two frames a second, which is even worse than we get for CGA. But of course, that's just because this is a PC, not an AT. And of course, we can expect it to be uh, completely underpowered for pretty much any EGA games. Uh, but it does prove that in principle it does work. Now the interesting thing is when I set this card in the machine before without changing the jumpers, this machine, uh, this game would actually work, uh, but it would actually crash every now and again. Uh, so I don't seem to be getting any crashes now. Uh, in fact, I was getting uh, a lot of corruption and all sorts of other issues when I was running that before. So here's the main part of the game with the cars, and uh, everything seems to be working okay at this point. Uh, in terms of the gameplay itself. 
Uh, so I'm going to be interested to see what happens when I quit from the game uh, to DOS to see whether there's corruption still. So let's do that now. And yeah, this doesn't look right at all. Uh, you can see there's a lot of corruption there and something's clearly gone wrong. Uh, so I don't know whether that's something to do with the game itself or whether the EGA card has some kind of problem. Uh, it's a bit hard to tell because I only have one copy of this game. Uh, and if I exit to DOS, um, well, at the moment it seems to have locked up entirely. It's still playing music, but it's not responding at all to keyboard input. So I'm just trying a second game here, Starflight 2, which has an EGA mode. And uh, I'm just going to try this to see whether this game uh, exhibits any corruption or whether it actually works. So this is what the gameplay looks like, and it looks very sharp and the colours are quite vibrant in my opinion. Uh, IBM actually made a 5154 monitor specifically for EGA, it was called their Enhanced Colour Monitor. And uh, this actually supposedly had uh, sharper uh, detail and also more vibrant colours, but I think this is really quite acceptable and so you can see that you can run uh, a lot of EJ games, at least, on a uh, CJ monitor just fine. So this is Iron Man Off-Road, and as you can see, there's a lot of corruption in this. Uh, it seems that the game is able to draw the, the initial screen no problems at all, but as soon as it starts using sprites, uh, where it has to actually read from EJ RAM, uh, it's actually giving a lot of corruption. And I think that this proves that the EJ card itself is actually faulty. So I'm going to switch over to the EJ Wonder card just so we can see what this looks like. Uh, the reason I picked this game is because it has a 16 color EGA and a 64 color EGA version. So here is the game running correctly with the EJ Wonder card and as you can see there's no corruption anymore. Uh, so that really clinches it, it's definitely the card that's uh, faulty which is really a shame because those uh, IBM EJ cards are as rare as hen's teeth very very hard to get hold of so I'm going to have to replace some memory chips on that at some point and try to get it working uh, but anyway this is the EJ16 mode that this game has uh, so I'm going to switch over now to the EJ64 mode and you can see what the difference in the colors is so this is what happens when I run it in the EJ64 mode on this uh, CJ monitor and it doesn't look quite right as you can see it uh, looks a little bit uh, too red, uh, presumably that's supposed to be brown or something like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to an actual EJ monitor and it turns out that the ECD monitor that comes with the Amstrad PC1640 is a true EJ monitor. Uh, so I'm going to connect that up and uh, we'll see what the difference is in this EJ64 mode. So I switched over to the Amstrad monitor, the PC ECD display and you can see that it still looks very red, uh, you're not getting brown ground at all. Uh, so it's not clear at all to me whether this is actually running in proper EGA mode or not. And this was generally a problem with the uh, EGA. Uh, there's no way, for example, that the EGA card can tell what kind of monitor is connected to it. So it doesn't know, for example, whether you have uh, a 32200 mode uh, with just a CJ monitor att attached or whether you have 32200 with EJ and similarly for the 64200 modes uh, in the 64350 modes it's possible for it to know because that wasn't a CJ mode uh, then it knows that you have an EJ monitor and yeah if you look at the colors here they don't look right at all so my strong suspicion is that this monitor isn't working in uh, proper EJ mode. So some EJ monitors even had a switch on them to switch between the two different modes uh, but there were very very few games uh, produced that actually supported the higher uh, you know number of colors in the palette. Uh, most of the games just supported the 16 colors that uh, were available on CGA but just allowed you to have all of them on the screen at once. So in order to show off the capabilities of the EGA a little bit better, I've put the original EGA card, the IBM one, into this 286 machine. And uh, now it's not going to work perfectly because of the fault in it, but we should still be able to work around that for the most part. 
Uh, I've also connected up an original IBM color display, uh, which is the monitor that would be used with the original IBM CGA card in the IBM PC. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to select uh, an EGA video mode. So this is a 64350-16 color mode. And you can see that this just doesn't work at all uh, on this monitor. But what I can do is select a low res EJ mode. So this is 32200 16 colors. And of course, this will allow us to see all the 16 colors at the same time uh, on the monitor, which the CGI certainly couldn't do uh, in graphics mode. And then when I select color cycling here, it'll cycle through all of those colors. Uh, it looks like there's more than 16 here, but they really are uh, just the 16 CGA colors. So you have black, dark gray, blue, light blue, green, light green, cyan, light cyan, red, light red, magenta, light magenta, brown, yellow, uh, light gray, and white. Uh, and in fact, the uh, brown color was uh, specifically uh, adjusted in this particular monitor to give a more pleasing brown. So there's special circuitry just to handle that one color. Uh, so that's color 6. Uh, so now I'll press enter and I think all it really does here is just change the order of those 16 colors. I don't think that we get any new colors that aren't part of the uh, CGA palette. Uh, so that's basically the limit uh, of what we can do uh, with this particular monitor on this card. So you might think that all of the restrictions for those EGA modes come from the monitor itself. Uh, but I've actually gone back to the IBM color display here, so the CGA monitor, and I've hooked it up to the uh, ATI EGA Wonder 800 Plus card, and I'm going to run it in the 64350-16 color mode, which is the EGA mode, and you can see it works just fine on this monitor. Uh, so I'm uh, running this with turbo on so that it will render quickly. Uh, I'll turn turbo off when I do the color cycling because otherwise you get uh, really a lot of flicker uh, on the screen. Uh, but you can see that that's rendered uh, just fine and now when I do the color cycling uh, I'm pretty sure that there are 64 colors there. Uh, so there's no actual restriction uh, as far as EJ modes are concerned. Uh, for this CGA monitor. Uh, the restriction itself was in the original IBM EGA card and I guess this is just because IBM wanted backwards compatibility uh, for their hardware and this sort of explains why they have the jumper settings for both CGA and EGA monitors. Uh, but once you switch to a non-IBM EGA adapter everything works just fine even on this CGA monitor. Uh, so, of course, it's a little bit chunky. Uh, this uh, monitor doesn't have very many lines across it going down the screen uh, since it only had to support up to uh, 64200 mode uh, or 32200 mode. Uh, and uh, so, basically, in order to get the full uh, resolution or at least uh, the way it's supposed to look, uh, we really need an EJ monitor. So, the only thing that remains now is to switch over to the Amstrad. PC ECD monitor, which is a true EGA monitor, and see what that looks like with the ATI EGA Wonder card. So this is what it looks like on the Amstrad PC ECD monitor, which is a true EGA display. Uh, so certainly the pixels do look a little sharper, it does look like a higher resolution. Uh, the actual video mode is the same resolution, but uh, there are certainly more phosphors on the screen and so you get a much uh, better image. Uh, other than that, there shouldn't really be a lot of difference between the two. Uh, it takes about the same amount of time to render. Um, it's about um, you know, 30, 40 seconds, something like that. Uh, and obviously the colors are the same. Um, it's really just the sharpness of the image uh, that's different here. Uh, so that's what it looks like, and uh, so we can be sure that this is really full EGA mode. Uh, there were actually some EGA cards that had even higher resolutions, uh, and these were called extended EGA graphics adapters. 
Uh, but this is basically what you could expect with an EGA card with an EGA monitor. Anyway, that's all for today. Um, thanks very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. And we'll see you in a later video. Bye.